What is going on everyone? I hope all is well. Um, today I got a nice video for you. I'm going to show you how to manage state in Figma. Uh, and by that I mean uh, basically um, I'm going to be going over how to build out a button and each of their states from scratch and also implementing auto layout as well. So you will be using uh, learning that if you don't know it already. And also I'll be describing how the structure of these buttons and naming conventions that we'll be applying to these buttons and all their states. Um, also transcends more than just representing a button in all its states. It's also the way you can construct every other component in your system as well. And we'll go about doing that. So for example, um, if you go to material design, I'll have the link in the description and you can kind of overview what, what their buttons are here. They got three types of buttons. They got the contained, outlined, and text variant. And here they, sh they showcase all the hover states once you interact with that button. And then also they have all these types with an, a leading icon um, to convey that information associated with that button. Um, so basically, if you want to get a general idea of a button in depth, I recommend going through this documentation. And basically what I did was I grabbed a screenshot of four button variants. There is five, but we're not going to be building out that one. Just going to convey a um, general idea around uh, one button, the contain button. And then from there, uh, I'll have this file uh, published on the Figma community beta that you can duplicate and then go along with me or at least dissect what I have built. And without any further ado, that is the general overview of what we'll be building. So let's get started and build out these buttons. So um, buttons generally have, well, if you look on the web, a button has this many states. So I'm gonna pull out my inspector tool and I have, the, and this is Google Chrome. And in this inspector tool um, here, I can analyze this button here. And then I have this thing called hub, this little hover button here. You can toggle the element state. So I can see what an active state looks like. I can see what a focus state looks like. I can see what a focus within state looks like. I can see what the hover state looks like and the visited state. But here you'll notice that I actually haven't really, um, uh, I haven't really picked out the right button in this hier. Oh, there we go, okay. I wasn't picking the right button in this hierarchy to showcase you all the states. But here if in the DOM tree, this is what this tree is called that you see here. Um, I have the button selected here, and then I can click on this toggle element state to see what all the states look like. And you'll see the button to my left change as a result of toggling each state. And these are five states. We're gonna be going over um, the states that we'll build for our button, it'll be very much similar. Um, and yeah, that's the general idea of that. If you didn't know how to do that, you can easily do that by hitting Command Shift C in Google Chrome, or if you hit Help, uh, if you hit Help and type in, whoops, Inspector Element. It's one of your developer tools. Inspect Elements. Um, it'll pop that panel up, and then you have all these tabs. And basically, you can hit this little, this guy up here and then hover over the interface and go exactly to the element you need in the DOM. And then you might have to go a couple levels higher to, to select the proper button, which is what I had to do. Anyways, that's another topic for another video if you're interested. So let's get back to Figma. And now that we have that context and understanding the types of states we need to make, uh, here are the following states that we're going to be end up going to end up making. So we have states here and then uh, we have hovered, focused, pressed, which is just the active state and then a disabled state. And one thing we're definitely gonna to wanna to endure ensure when we're constructing a component is that it has the proper set of contrast ratios. And there is a nice design tool called Leonardo Color.io that is in the description. It actually allows you to um, input the RGB value or, or or you set the color space interpolation to RGB and then you can actually interpret your colors, the base color being the background, um, to white, for example, in this scenario, and then the other color uh, being the foreground. Um, and it also has an inverted uh, example as well to the right to basically you could input your hex values with these two colors or continue to add more colors to this tool and view the contrast ratios. And you just, if you want a stronger contrast ratio, it'll give you a contrast ratio of 5.5 utilizing this color. 
And if you don't have that, if you don't know where that hex value is, it's actually on the right side here in the properties panel. And it says, this is the contrast ratio with a color of white, F, hashtag FFF, FFF. Um, and, and this color value gives you this 5.53 contrast ratio. So you can utilize this tool to represent uh, different sets of state um, without having to like do the trickery and math or whatever to identify uh, proper contrast ratios to apply to, to adhere to uh, WCAG compliance, uh, which is very important. Um, for accessible for your users who have impaired abilities. Um, just some ex just a side note there. But anyways, let's get started. I've been rambling. I hope that was helpful. Um, I got this button and I'm going to refer to uh, this screenshot here. So I got this screenshot. It, this button, I'm going to start with the frame. This frame is supposed to have a height of 36. Um, I'm going to round the corners out to four. And then uh, this text is actually set that Roboto, just give it a height of 14 text. And then in my type details, I'm gonna make sure that this utilizes the indentation or the uppercase um, letter casing. So that way uh, the textile is very similar. And then I'm just gonna write out, uh, whoops, I'm gonna write out button there. And then make that, hold down option V and H to center it. And then I'm gonna make, hit shift A, that's gonna make that a um, it's going to make it a auto layout component so it dynamically adapts to the width the uh, it'll automatically adapt to the buttons proper sizing so it'll maintain that padding on the left and right as needed but by default it does add a horizontal padding of one set that to zero and a vertical padding of one so I want to just set that to zero and now that I have that set um, I'm gonna click on the parent frame there and hit shift A, but uh, you could also uh, right click on that and then click add auto layout because that is all I was doing with that shortcut key. Then I'm gonna label it um, button, actually uh, I'm gonna name it primary, primary uh, default primary button You don't have to name primary button. I'm just going to go primary default. Um, and default represents the state of this button. So now we have the labeling set accordingly. And if you hover over your text element and you have both these set to auto layout and you hold that option, you'll see the dimensions of the button. And here we have the proper height set to 36, but we want to change the padding on the left and right from 64.5 to 16 because it's a lot of it's a lot of white space there. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And if I just keep on typing, um, whoops, whoopsie. Uh, if I just select my parent frame there uh, and set that horizontal padding to 16, you should see my let's see. You're gonna want to set this to horizontal and ensure that was set to horizontal. My apologies um, for my lack of knowledge there, not allowed. Um, and make sure that's set to 16. Um, ensure you have the right auto layout property. And then once you have that, you're just gonna to wanna to change the color. So if I click on the frame and then hit Control C and then select the background there. Um, I'll get that uh, material design color, but um, I'd probably ensure you get the proper hex value as opposed to using the color picker because it might not actually uh, grab the exact hex value since I did grab that as a screenshot. If you were going to be mimicking the exact um, material design buttons, but that doesn't matter for this case. It's solely to show you the concepts and construction of creating clear and concise buttons and being able to swap them in the instance dropdown menu efficiently and also through the assets panel if you are a design systems designer um, trying to make these buttons accessible to your designers um, so now that i have this button i'm going to want to create the rest of the states so and i'm going to want to organize all my buttons in one area and the way you do that is if you're going to have buttons and you're going to have several different types of buttons for example material design has um, 
the contain button, which is what we're creating without a leading icon. And then there's an outline variant. And then there's a text-based variant. And basically, if you create a frame from scratch, um, like I have in this scenario, that was labeled buttons. And I'm just going to wrap this frame here and the, with these containing elements. I'm going to label it buttons. You'll have a, a category organized specifically for buttons. And you could do the same thing for another set of components you make in your design system. Um, for example, what if you just made text input fields? You could just type in text input or, you know, maybe you want to be a little more generic because you your design system takes into consideration a lot of input fields. You could just label it input fields. And then from there, um, label the components themselves within that parent frame. So you don't have to label all of these buttons and then the primary button in the buttons category that is the default state, um, if that makes sense to you. Um, I just, if it doesn't, just follow along with me. And um, yeah, that's just a little side note there. So now that we have a default state, I should just label that default state. So we've got the default state here. Um, sweet. So we got that default state. And now I'm actually gonna make this a master component. So before I do that, I'm gonna duplicate it a couple of times for my other states. And then I'll make that a master component. Sweet, we're good to go. We got this master component um, that is organized correctly. And then I'm gonna change this to hovered state. And then I'm gonna change this one to the pressed state, which is actually the active state. Um, and then I'm gonna change this bad boy to the disabled state. So now once you have all these labeled correctly, um, we can get to cracking on making the rest of the states. So with that being said, uh, I need to make another button. Whoops. I was missing the focused state button. What in the world's, sorry. Just trying to organize my layers panel here. And now, now that I have all these states and you're following along with me, uh, we can we can get to just creating the variation. So it's actually very simple. Uh, we can just, for one, we can use that Leonardo color tool, right? So I can grab this hex, this fill value here, 572BE5. And then maybe uh, I wanna, maybe you just wanna like maybe brighten up the hovered state or what does the hovered state do in material design with a contain button? You know, what does that do? You know, it, it adds a drop shadow. If you, if you pay close enough attention, when I hover, you can see, a, you can see it elevate on hover. So maybe we could just do that, add some drop shadow. Um, so let's do that. All right. So go to effects, that plus button, we got the drop shadow there and we sort of have a similar effect here on hover. So uh, again, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of like making this pixel perfect because that is not the primary objective, but this is similar here. Um, so now we got our hovered state. So once you have it finalized, I, I would just make it a master component. You can just hold down option command K if you're on the Mac. It might be control command K or shift K on, the, on Windows, or you can just click this button here, uh, create component and you're good to go. And now that you have that hovered state, um, we're gonna go to the focus state. And for the focus state, you're actually gonna, uh, one way to do a focus state is to click on stroke. And as you apply the stroke, you can change the setting to outside stroke. And maybe we just wanted to make it the same hex value with, with a lighter shade of opacity. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Um, let's see here. The stroke can get I see, since the stroke's set to white, you can't even see it. So I'm gonna input that color. So now I have that color and then I wanna make it opaque. So it is very apparent that there's a focus state on this button, um, but from afar, it is actually quite difficult to see. So maybe I could even increase, you know, you could try to increase the width of it um, or the stroke of it and then change the opacity to see what makes sense to you. Um, we're slowly conveying that this, like communicating a 
um, just a focus state in general and how to design a focus state. Um, nothing too specific here, but that is now our focus state. And now that we have that, I'm gonna make that a master component. And then we'll have our press state. And I'm actually gonna make the press state a lighter shade of purple. And if you go to material design, I actually have a material design color palette you can copy um, here in the community. So if you, I'll have the link in the description for it, but there is a color palette you can utilize. Um, if I go ahead and open this project, this original file, um, I could utilize like another shade of purple maybe. Maybe I just wanna grab this hex value. Um, I got that hex value. Uh, slap that hex value in there. And then it looks like I like a press state. Although that, that's a little too bright, so I'm just gonna change that there. Um, this, that button looks hideous, but just ignore it. I'm just trying to convey um, the concepts here, not the actual design. Um, and then now we have a disabled state, so maybe we're gonna to wanna to gray it out so it looks like it doesn't actually function. Um, so we can, we can do that by easily just kinda, of, again, you can grab your own set of gray colors and uh, do that as well. Um, but yeah, so there, there we go. We have all our button types and I've made that a disabled state. So now that we have everything grouped accordingly, I can kind of show you what I was talking about earlier where um, if you have this contained in a buttons group and say you're a designer and you duplicate this component um, and say this library was, say this library was published. I'm just gonna publish the library real quick to give you an example. Um, so now that I have this published library, um, there it's it's organized in my assets panel, buttons. This parent frame gives it that naming convention. And then every button literally starts with primary. So I have every type of primary button that I could access within my dropdown panel and just bring in here and hover over it and read the name as well. So you could do that or you could, you could search for buttons and view it. Um, there's also like a, like if I have the buttons viewing right now, there's like two views you can toggle between. Also there's a team library modal where you can type in buttons and then bring in those buttons. So I have a couple of different libraries, which is what you're seeing. But what I was trying to get across is uh, that in this file, you can just drag and drop those from this uh, modal that you can click on here. And the nice thing about this as well with that clear and concise naming convention is that in this instance dropdown menu, I now have all my states that I need, literally. So when I'm in a design and I have my instance linked to my master component, or, or I just have my instance, but I want a different state of that instance to represent a different interaction, like a prototype or a design, I just change it. That's all I do. All I gotta do is in this instance dropdown menu due to uh, the clear and concise organization is I just change it, that's all. And that's pretty much everything I have here today, folks. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and ask me for another one. Uh, I will be launching a master Figma course on my own content management system platform in the future. And I'm going to be giving away this massive master Figma course to over a, to a hundred of my fans. Um, so please reach out to me if you want that course. I'll give it to you for free. Um, again, thank you guys for everything, and I'll talk to you soon.